All right, next letter. This is from RR, first and last initials there. And I cannot read that thing, something New York, but the, the postal thing over here is Albany, New York, so I'll go with that. Um, okay. Greetings to a brother in Christ. I have watched quite a few of your videos, Amish, Bruderhof, Mennonites, and others. I gleaned some good information, and I want to thank you for that. I went to your website and checked it out, watched a couple more videos and read your statement of faith and what you reject. The list is long and I see myself here and there. So I decided to write to you to bring up objection in my own defense because I see myself in the rubric hyperdispensational. Um, you, I'm saying that as hyperdispensational, meaning it's in quotations here. You mentioned that we are all in one body, kingdom apostles included. Um, what tribe are you ruling or belong to because the New Jerusalem has 12 gates, thrones, apostles ruling over 12 tribes? Um, yeah, uh, the book of Hebrews 8 verse 8 quotes the prof prophet Jeremiah. Um, I'm not going to read the scriptures here. You can, you can read it. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, he has it typed out there, which is fine. Um, well, I, I'll read it. I, I guess I might as well. Uh, verse 8, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded, regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people." And they shall not teach every man his uh, neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So that's... Um, okay. I'm trying to see here if it's... Uh, Okay, he's saying Hebrews chapter 8. I'm just going to check this real quickly here just to make sure that he's quoting it or printing it the right way. Here, just give me a minute. 8 verse 8. Yeah, it looks, it looks like he has it right there, but... If you read this chapter of Jeremiah, you will see there is a difference between Jews and Gentiles opposite to the body of Christ. The apostles are the leaders under Christ in this heavenly earthly kingdom. Question to you, where do you see yourself there? Um, well, Galatians chapter 3, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Um, pre Peter preaches the new covenant given to Israel on Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. Um, but it, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel... And it shall come to pass in the, in the last days that saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And all my servants and all my handmaidens will, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Uh, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, um, Peter is preaching that, but that doesn't mean that the new covenant came in. Okay, see, this is where people get messed up. Oh, Peter preached it, therefore it came in. No, no, it was offered to the Jewish people. They rejected Jesus again, so it gets put off. The new covenant did not come in. How do you know? Read Rev Romans chapter 11. The new covenant is not here yet. Jesus in John 4 shows a miracle depicting the same. In the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there are six water pots of stone, and after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece, 
Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Okay, next part of this thing here it says, not until the fall of Israel, Acts 7, is it even possible for Paul to be saved because he rejected the New Covenant Gospel. Huh? The New Covenant Gospel? Um, you're quite confused. Saul was lost uh, with no hope of, for salvation. Okay, now just hold on a second here. Not until the fall of Israel, Acts 7, is it even possible for Paul to be saved. What about other people? You can see it at the top there. Okay. What about other people? Um, you watch out for hyper dispensationalists. I know Ruckman said that there's there's three groups that he'll kick out as soon as you know if he finds one in them. Um, a hyper dispensationalist, a hyper Calvinist, and a charismatic. Get rid of those three people; they're quite heretical. Romans chapter sixteen, verse seven: Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Right there. Look it up in your own Bible. Okay? There were people in Christ before Paul. Paul didn't reject the uh, New Covenant Gospel. What in the world is a New Covenant Gospel? Saul was lost with no hope for salvation. Really? Really? What about the other disciples? You see, if you don't understand what a hyper-dispensationalist is, a hyper-dispensationalist says that there was a gospel given to the, the Jews and whatever else, and that was a different gospel. Peter and James, John, you know, they were preaching the gospel of repentance to salvation for the Jewish people, and that now over here you have Paul, the gospel is given to Paul, and it's the new gospel that we have, so there's basically two bodies of Christ or the church of the one body versus the church. They get this all stuff messed up. Um, Saul was lost with no hope for salvation. God in his never-ending grace for the good of humankind. Okay, show me that one in Scripture. Mankind. Human is a modern invention. Revealed the gospel of grace according to the mystery to Saul. He was the first to be saved into the body of Christ. You are full of it. I'm sorry, buddy. You don't know what you're talking about. First to be saved in the body of Christ, um, who also were in Christ before me. Romans chapter 16, verse 7. I confronted a hyper-dispensationalist to his face, not on YouTube funny land, to his face and said, what about that verse right there? And he read it and he says, yeah, that is kind of a problem. <laughs> yeah, repent of your stupidity. Um so Paul was not the first to be saved in the body of Christ. Okay, you're a wing nut. He is the pattern, revelation, revelation of the dispensation of grace given to Paul toward us. He is the master builder. 1 Corinthians uh, 3, verse 10. He laid the foundation which is Christ according to the gospel of the mystery and not according to the kingdom gospel for Israel laid by Christ with the 12 apostles. Matthew 16, verse 18. <laughs> okay. Uh, the new covenant will be fulfilled with Christ's second coming and the establishing of the kingdom millennium. Now you mentioned that the body of Christ is the bride of Christ. Could you please show me one on verse from your Bible where this is said? How can Christ marry his own body? We are already one with Christ, but I will show you who the bride of Christ is. Let's go to the book of Revelation 20, verse 1, verse 9. Okay, there, um, funny bunny, let me just show you from the scriptures. Can you show me one verse? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, let's see, where do I want to start here? Okay. Verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. 
Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. See the comparison. Husband, love your wife, even as Christ loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. How can Christ marry his own body? Says the letter. Quite ignorant of some scripture there. Um, verse 31, Ephesians 5, 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Okay? It's a uh, great mystery that uh, lost people don't get. I'll let you figure out that. Um, <clears throat> I will show you who the bride of Christ is. Let's go to the book of Revelation 21, verse 9. Well, why don't we go to Revelation chapter 19? Let's go to Revelation chapter 19. Let's see, where do I want to start here? Verse 7. Let, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready, and to her was arrayed... Or, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. The church. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. How do you miss this stuff? But let's, he says, let's go to the book of Revelation 21, verse 9. Skip Revelation 19. You know, his wife hath made herself ready. You know, let's just skip that. Let's, let's, not, let's not go there. Revelation 21, verse 9. And there came to me one of the seven angels, um, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife, that already got married to him in Revelation 19. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. It is Israel in the kingdom. No, there, buddy. Um, Revelation 19. The marriage happened back then. Go down to the earth. Jesus conquers the Antichrist's army, casts the Antichrist and false prophet into the lake of fire, conquers their army, goes set up, sets up his kingdom, has the marriage supper. Revelation chapter 20 happens. All right, you go the whole way through the thousand year kingdom of Jesus Christ on the earth. At the end of it, Satan is bound, uh, or Satan is bound, cast in bottomless pit at the beginning. At the end, he's brought back out, deceives the nations. The great white, the you know, Lord burns up the earth, great white throne judgment. Before you get to Revelation 21, you left out a whole lot of stuff there. Okay? Um, <clears throat> it is Israel in the kingdom, and that makes all the sense in the world. Well, if you're lost. Just as prophesied in the miracle of Cana, we are the body of Christ. We, the body of Christ, are in Christ, and Israel will be in Christ by marriage, marriage supper of the Lamb, and all will be in Christ. Praise be to God. Okay, if you understood that... Uh, uh, yeah. Our salvation body of Christ is secure. Israel is conditional under the establishment of the new covenant and all Israel shall be saved. My last point is KJV only. Okay. 
So we're switching points now. Hopefully you've seen that this guy just absolutely lied. Revelation 19 is the marriage of the Lamb. Before the millennial kingdom. Before the kingdom on earth. We rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years. The simple understanding of Ephesians chapter 5. How the bride and the groom are one flesh. Paul writes about that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. <laughs> yeah. How can you be the body and the bride at once? By reading the Bible. Ephesians chapter 5. All right. On to the last point here. You are talking to a KGV only guy and this is the Bible I am using. But... <laughs> That God, you go, Billy Goat Believers, Goat Believers, you know, they, they, they like the butt things. They're always button things, you know. Um, back, I got a little sidetrack here. Back when I was a young boy, um, my uncle, Don Denlinger, had founded a couple different tourist attractions in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. One of them was Millbridge Village. And a lot of my siblings worked there, you know, for Uncle Don and whatever. And I think he had sold at that point to Jim Vitale, he was a guy that had he had sold two, and then Uncle Don went up and built the Red Caboose Motel and then the Steamboat Inn later on. But I remember they had this petting zoo, and I liked to go into the petting zoo. There was all the cute little fuzzy lambs and whatever, and there, but there was a stinking goat there, and I just, oh, I hated that thing because you're there petting some animal, and a stupid thing would just come up behind you, and bam, and he'd hit you, just always button you, you know, with his, you know, little horns there and whatever. He's always, just bang, hitting you. And you just always, you know, it's always just, just nervous. You go in there and you're thinking, where's that stupid goat at? You know, and oh, there he is over there. And you're kind of petting the animal going, stay away from me. And you're, oh, here comes his head down and he's coming to butt you. I did that video years ago about watch out for billy goat believers, you know. And I just, I don't like goats <laughs> in more than one way. But uh, so watch out for billy goat believers. Make a statement and then say, but... But that God preserved his word in English without error in it, I don't believe anymore, and I have reasons for it. I study ancient civilizations, and the timeline in the Old Testament of the KJV is incorrect. The translators use the Masoretic text for their translation, so also must of the English translations, most of the English translations. It was corrupted by Jewish rabbis in the first and second century for the reasons so that they, they could prove Jesus Christ could not be the Messiah according to their rabbinical teaching. Well, then why does the King James Bible uh, clearly show that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That's kind of an issue. Um, <clears throat> not only did they corrupt the genealogies in Genesis 5 and 11, but also changed scripture in the Old Testament referring to Jesus Christ as the Messiah. Whatever. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Using the genealogies of Genesis 5 and 11 according to the Maoretic. Okay, up here he has Masoretic, down here is Maoretic. Some kind of thing with mayonnaise, I guess. Uh, Mayoretic text, KJV and, and others. I'm being sarcastic there, if you can't tell. The pyramids would be pre-flood, but they are built from flood settle, settlement rock limestone. Using the Greek Septuagint translation, <laughs> Catholic, excuse me, <clears throat> and it's Genesis 5 and 11 genealogies, everything falls into place. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. I, I, you, you people aren't going to get past me on this whole thing. I studied manuscript evidence. I know about this stuff. This LXX, the Septuagint and everything else that Jesus and the apostles used. Nonsense. It came out. There are no BC copies of the Septuagint. Okay. It was part of Origins, Hexapla. That's the first time it showed up. Give me a break. Jesus says, not one jot or one tittle, you know, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. He's talking about Hebrew letters. If he's reading from a Greek Septuagint, he wouldn't have referred to Hebrew letters. Okay, and there's so many other ways to, to debunk this whole LXX designation, the Septuagint. It's nonsense, a bunch of trash, you know, that the Catholic Church likes to perpetuate. Um, I've not seen any Bible where the simple story of salvation is not available, but I've seen many Bibles with a specific bias to a teaching. What can be a, a great hindering on your study of the Word? I came out of Catholicism by the grace of God. Uh, took a little bit much uh, baggage with you there. 
and the Lord has shown me the way by different people throughout my walk and growth. Les Fels, Felsdick was instrumental in my first year. I don't agree with, on all his teaching and think he has some errors, but the whole salvation he has rock solid. No idea. How could I identify his errors? By studying the scripture, go on my knees and ask the Lord for discernment. For me, it is never important to be right. It is important to, to me to know the truth. Without humbleness, this is impossible. So without Luther, Calvin, Tyndale, Zwingli, um, where would we be today? Were they perfect? For sure not. Luther wanted to turn the book of James, burn the book of James, excuse me, because he did not rightly divide, but he took that first step. He still was full of bias. In my opinion, Les Felsdick has many errors, but I benefited from the steps he took. God always has and always will preserve his word by his spirit to the one who seeks the truth and humbleness. What does that mean? What kind of a statement is that? I mean, I'm, I'm getting a little sarcastic here because I, I've dealt with this kind of stupidity for years. This is, this is God's word, but it's not perfect. It's, it's God's word, but there's errors in it. And, and the Greek Septuagint, well, I can agree with that in some places. And, and, but this one over here, I think this translation has it better. And this, it, you're your own God. That's all you are. So I thank the Lord for the truth I could glean from your videos. I pray that you consider what I had to say. I did. I'm very familiar with your teachings, and they're heretical. I pray for ongoing humbleness for myself and you, and that we both grow in the Word of God according to the gospel of grace revealed by the risen Lord Jesus to Paul. Um, there is no gospel of grace. Okay, Grace has always been there. All right, Grace is there. It's God's grace that anybody gets saved. At any dispensation. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Um, we know the risen Christ is now, now according to the mystery, the road to salvation is now wide open, not like under the conditional salvation of the covenants. But sadly, the world rejects it, blinded by the prince of the air. So they will not recognize this wide road and look to works religion in their own works and being good for their salvation. Every religion in our world is a works-oriented religion. The whole scripture is for our learning. God bless you and your family, a brother in Christ, RR. Initials. Um, you need to repent of your hyper-dispensational hyper nonsense. And if you don't believe the King James Bible, then for goodness sake, don't come to it for authority. Don't try to proclaim, well, the Bible teaches this and the Bible teaches that. If this isn't perfect, then it's not your authority. And I have nothing more to say to you.